So, starting today, this Saturday, and the next two weekends to follow, we're going to be doing something different on this show, and it's only thanks to you guys, the listeners, and the viewers out there for the feedback. So, over the last couple of weeks, I've been doing subtle changes on the show with more changes and tweaks to follow as the season gets closer and closer. But before I even started that, I asked you guys out on YouTube, what is it that you haven't seen so far on the show that you would like to see moving forward? And one of the things that came up was we would like to know what's going on with the rest of the NFC North. What is it that we should expect as Vikings fans when it comes to the Chicago Bears, the Green Bay Packers, and the Detroit Lions? After all, we have to face each of those three teams twice a year. And I said, to hell with that. Why not? Let's go ahead and do it. It's the offseason. There's nothing else to talk about. So, And this is new territory for me, but I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this, guys. I appreciate the feedback. I spent all this week watching uh, the Chicago Bears games from the 2018 season. So let's break it down. We'll start with them first. This isn't even a hot take. I think it's just common sense. The Chicago Bears are the biggest threat to the Minnesota Vikings in the division. Next week, we'll do the Green Bay Packers. The week to follow, we will do the Detroit Lions. So let's start with the offense. The best way that I can describe the Chicago Bears offense is it's a gadget type of offense. They run a gadget style of offense. They run almost exclusively out of the shotgun. They're in a three-way tie with two other teams in the league uh, for second in the NFL that utilizes the shotgun formation the most. The only team that runs the formation more than the Chicago Bears is the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think with Jordan Howard gone, I think that opens up things for the Bears to possibly be number one in 2019. The engine that makes this offense go as far as player personnel is Tariq Cohen. I don't think there's any question about it. And I'm not talking about the running game. I'm talking about Tariq Cohen. What makes this dude so special is he's just different. This is a different type of cat. Tariq Cohen is essentially Tyreek Hill that just so happens to play running back. And it's crazy because when you talk about running backs, uh, you, you want to see them run between the tackles and you want them to pass block and catch out of the backfield. Like, oh, that's great. He's an all-around running back. No, he's more than that. He's way more. This dude can line up in a slot receiver role. He can line up in the outside receiver role. This dude can do way more than catch out of the backfield as a running back. This dude runs routes. He runs freaking routes, short routes, intermediate, deep crossing routes, and he will catch the ball, and he's a dynamic playmaker. He's different. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Maybe LaDainian Tomlinson, as far as that explosive and can stretch the field like that, whether you're talking about running the football or being a receiver, he's different, man. And when you're talking about the Minnesota Vikings, how that matches up with them, listen, Eric Kendricks, he's our best cover linebacker. He His performance dropped off in 2018. I expect him to bounce back in 2019. With that said, even at his best, Eric Kendricks has no business lining up on Tariq Cohen. He just can't hang with him. It's really that simple. The only way that you can realistically match up with him and not have him go off for an explosive play or at least minimize that, you need to have a cornerback, someone from the secondary, either a cornerback or a safety. And I don't care if he's lining up in the receiver role or as a running back position in the shotgun next to Mitch Trubisky. You need to have someone that's just as fast to keep up with him. So my answer to that, my resolution to that, the guy that can uh, minimize those issues to me is Mackenzie Alexander. I think he's the best fit to match up against Tariq Cohen because if he lines up at a running back position in the shotgun, it's okay. Mac is so used to playing at the second level. He did a hell of a job last year. So if he has to go after him when he uh, gets the handoff from Mitch Trubisky, it's fine. He's got the speed to run sideline to sideline to at least counteract what to Tariq Cohen can do. And then if he lines up in the, in the receiver role, again, speed is the factor. I don't think Mackenzie Alexander is our best cover corner, but as far as speed is concerned, and if as long as you have safety help, that's where Mackenzie Alexander can be best utilized and serve to go up against that guy. So that's the thing that you have to worry about the most is Tariq Cohen. Now when you look at the overall running game, again, this goes back to the gadget type of offense, a lot of misdirection. First of all, the read option is their bread and butter. That's their go-to. But what's crazy is, and the reason why they do this is kind of like the Seattle Seahawks, whereas Mitch Trubisky 
is a hell of an athlete, dog. This dude, he's got legs. He's got speeds. For a quarterback, he's fast as hell. He's strong. He's not scared. And with a good offensive line that he has with him, a pretty decent one at that, he can break off for a 10 or 15-yard run easily. So the read option, you have to be wary of Mitch Trubisky or Tariq Cohen. Or even more, there's a third option that you have to worry about, and it's not necessarily a given player. It's just a third option that you have to be worried about overall. Sometimes what they'll do, the Chicago Bears, they'll do the read option to where Tariq Cohen, he won't get the ball, and Mitch won't even keep it. They'll do the read option, Mitch will keep it, and then flick it off in the opposite direction, let's say to a Trey Burton. So you have to be wary of three possible guys getting the ball, and even, let's say, if they're not doing the read option, as soon as they snap the ball, they'll have two, sometimes three guys running towards the ball to where you don't know who's going to get the ball and just go with it. The recipe to defend the Chicago Bears and this type of offense is discipline. Discipline and patience. You can't be reckless. You can't be relentless. You can't over-pursue when it comes to this Bears offense because as soon as you do, you may think one guy has the ball, but someone else has it, and they're on the opposite side of the field, of the field and there's nothing you can do about it. Then when you go to the passing game, what's interesting about them you also need to practice discipline as far as the front seven anyway. There is no point in blitzing. There's no point in sending extra men after Mitch Trubisky uh, to get after, oh, let's bring pressure. There's no point because this offense is designed to get rid of the ball quickly. And when I say quickly, I'm talking about Mitch Trubisky. What's really interesting is that first read, and this actually can go to the secondary too. If you're in the secondary, we talked about the front seven. You need to be disciplined because, again, he can take off with his legs. And when he can get outside the pocket, when the coverage breaks down and he extends the play, he can make plays like that with his arm, too. So it's not just, hey, he needs to beat us with his arm. You need Mitch Trubisky to beat you with his arm in the pocket. Containment. You have to keep him in the pocket. And when it comes to the secondary, you can't play Five yards off of the receivers. So whether that's Taylor Gabriel or Allen Robinson, you can't play soft coverage on those guys because he gets rid of the ball super quickly. And the thing is, to be super tight coverage on them, you need to be wary because whatever direction, and this probably goes to the safety more than anything else. If you're the cornerbacks, you need to be focused on the receiver. If you're Anthony Harris or you're Harrison Smith, wherever, wherever you see Mitch Trubisky's eyes at, so wherever you see him looking at, that's where he's trying to throw the ball. He's not trying to practice deception where he's trying to look off a receiver here and throw it somewhere else. That's where he wants to go with the football. If you have tight coverage or if you cheat and you try to jump that ball to make Mitch Trubisky either throw a bad pass to where you can make a play on the ball or make him pull back and force him to go to his second and third option, his second and third reads, that's where you give yourselves a chance. And again, contain him in the pocket and force force Mitch Trubisky to beat you in the pocket with his arm because he will throw it up for grabs. I think when it comes to Trubisky on his first read throwing the ball, he's a, he's up there. He's, a, he's among the top of the league as far as quarterbacks are concerned. When he goes to his second or third reads, he's one of the worst quarterbacks in the, in the NFL. He will throw it up for grabs, and that will give you an opportunity to make a play on the ball, and that's why you saw his touchdown to interception ratio is two to one. You want to really get it more to three to one. Certainly, it was his second year last year. Maybe he'll get better next year. So you never know. But that's the thing that you need to be looking out for the most when it comes to this offense: patience, patience, and patience. Now, as far as the defense is concerned, how you counteract that? You pray. You just pray, man. You pray. You do your best. Uh, even more than that, the offensive line, the only way that you can negate the uh, defensive line in the front seven, including Khalil Mack against the Chicago Bears, you need to have a physical offensive line, someone that can match that power and intensity that the Chicago Bears have. You noticed it in the uh, wild card game against the Philadelphia Eagles. Lane Johnson had the right tackle, and I get it's Lane Johnson. He's one of the best offensive linemen. He's one of the best tackles in the league. Lane Johnson had a damn near flawless game, and that's including neutralizing Khalil Mack. Not even just a scheme where he's, oh, he's mis misguiding, oh, he's faking here and going in the inside. No, just this is where I'm planning. Wherever the defender comes, whoever's coming in this lane, I'm blocking you. And a lot of times when they would switch Khalil Mack to the Chicago Bears' left side, 
Lane Mack and the Eagles' right side, he will lock up Khalil Mack. He had a flawless game. I don't think the Vikings really have that. Brian O'Neill, he's going into his second year. We'll see if he gets better strength-wise. Horizontally, or not horizontally speaking, laterally speaking, as far as his foot movement, he's great. His strength, that's the thing that needs to get up there the most. But Drew Samir, that's the guy that I talk about the most that can be that physical presence, at least in the interior. Another thing that you have to look forward to as far as how to counteract it, there's nothing you can do about this defense in terms of getting hit and possibly uh, throwing an interception or a bunch of batted balls or having a low completion percentage against this defense. This defense is one of the best in the league at each and every level. They're an opportunistic defense. The secondary is great. You have to accept the fact, if you're Kirk Cousins, that you're going to get hit. You need to stand strong in the pocket and know where it is that you want to throw the ball quickly. Your first, second read, if you have a check down pass and the first two reads don't work, go to the check down. If that doesn't work, throw the ball away. You need to have an internal clock in your head to make sure, okay, Two and a half seconds, and if nothing's there, throw the ball away or bat or uh, spike the ball, whatever it is. You cannot take any chances. Having said that, you're going to take hits. You can't get rattled because if you do and you start and they start playing mind games on you and you start to panic a little bit, that's going to throw your game off and you'll throw even more incompletions and more interceptions. That's what you need to be focused on the most. If you can get a good push up front. On in the interior, it's, I know it's easier said than done. That's where things can open up in the center lane for a Dalvin Cook. So they're an opportunistic defense. There's not much you can do about it. Now, what's really interesting is when it comes to the Vikings specifically, you can give yourself a legitimate chance. I think the Vikings, I think the Bears are just too much for the Vikings. But if you're going to win this division, you're going to have to beat the Bears. The best way that you can do it if you're the Minnesota Vikings, Vikings is – Defense for defense. Your defense needs to be on point, just like the Chicago Bears defense will be, to where which offense can make the least amount of mistakes. I think in that edge, Kirk Cousins has the edge over Mitch Trubisky. I think the defense for the Vikings can create more opportunities to make plays against Trubisky as far as turnovers are concerned instead of Kirk Cousins or below Kirk Cousins. So that's the thing. If the defense is playing on point, then you give yourself a chance. I don't care if you're winning 9-6 to six in a field goal match. That's the way that you're going to win. You saw it with Nick Foles in the wild card game. He stood strong in the pocket. He knew he was going to get hit, but he knew where to throw the ball. He threw an interception in that game, but he still made the plays that needed to be made when it needed to be made the most. So that's the way that you can do it. Now, if the defense gets blown up, and Tariq Cohen goes off, and Mitch Trubisky, he's doing read up because the Vikings, they struggle against mobile quarterbacks. We saw that week 17, Anthony Barr got whoop, kind of got left on the misdirection. Mitch Trubisky did a cut and then ran for a first down on a key third down play. That's the thing. And, you know, Anthony Barr, he is who he is. Uh, it, the thing with Anthony Barr was interesting is just the fact that, I, again, I'm not going to go on this rant again, but it's just interesting because everyone says because of his low stats, the reason is he creates opportunities for other players. He brings pressure, and he creates other opportunities for everyone else. So apparently, Daniel Hunter, he's only getting his sacks because of Anthony Barr. He's creating, he's facilitating the defense for other players. So in other words, people are saying Anthony Barr is the Chris Paul of football. It's just ridiculous. But we struggle against mobile quarterbacks. If the offense puts any type of damage and the defense, they start to get exhausted and they're on the play for or they're on the field for extended amounts of time, then that's a recipe for the for disaster. You're not going to be able to do anything. That's where you need to be focused on the most. The defense. Mitch Trubisky, wherever he's looking, that's where he wants to go. Force him into his second or third read. Mackenzie Alexander, put him on Tariq Cohen. Doesn't matter where he's lining up. Line up on him and have safety help because he is Tyreek Hill. He is that damn good. He just so happens to be playing running back. So anyway, we do this three times a week. Uh, mediocre best sports podcast with realistic Randy. No extended podcast uh, for this week because I spent so much time uh, watching film on the 2018 Chicago Bears. You can follow me on Twitter at realistic underscore Randy. Facebook at realistic Randy. The next podcast will be on Monday. Score North. We'll see you then.